You know those types of locations that you always drive past on the way to somewhere and you see it sort of through your window and you're always like, oh man, I should really shoot there sometime. It looks really cool, but you never actually put the extra effort into stopping there and checking out properly or coming to take photos. Today, I'm in one of those locations. Let me show you around. So we're at a beach called, I'm pretty sure it's called Cathedral Rock, which is between Aries Inlet and Lawn on the Great Ocean Road. They're both places that I frequent fairly often to take photos. And I always notice cool spots, not specifically this one, but always cool spots on the way in between. And I'm always like, man, one day I'll go and shoot there because it looks like a really cool beach. As you can see, it's a pretty sort of gnarly, rocky beach. And we're here for sunset tonight, as you might be able to tell by the lighting conditions. Speaking of the conditions, it's kind of tricky and I'll show you why in a second. But we're going to have a bit of a wander and see if we can take a photo. Got about an hour before the sun sets. So plenty of time to hopefully have a wander and find a conversation or two. I've already got my eye on one that we can go and check out. So right now we're about an hour or so away, probably 40 minutes away from the sun setting. And as you can see, the whole beach is kind of in shadow. That's because right now, this time of year, the sun is setting across the horizon from where we are. So sort of behind behind the beach. So to the, the sun setting on the wrong angle, basically to light our subject up. So the sunset time actually is gonna be a lot later than when we lose light at this location, which is why it's a little bit tricky. Anyway, I've spotted a composition, which is about a meter to my left, your right. So let's go have a look. The thing I want to be mindful of with this type of composition is that boulder right in the middle of the frame, sort of up towards the top third. I want to make sure I've got separation with that between the edges of the rocks on both sides. Just because I think it'll look, oh, oh, because I think it'll look a little bit messy if I have black rocks overlapping with black rocks. I don't want to sort of show it as a bit more gnarly and rugged and disconnected. I wasn't super in love with this shot at first, but I think it's growing on me. So gear-wise, I've only got my polarizer on so far. As I mentioned, because we're in a nice shadowy beach, I'm not getting any direct sun on the subject at all. I can get away with not using filters right now because it's sort of, it's dark enough to not need them. And still get my shutter to about half a second or so, which is capturing the ripples in the waves really nicely. What I'm doing too is trying to underexpose my shot a little bit. That way I can still keep some detail in the clouds up there in the sky without having to bracket the exposure or anything. I like to do it in one shot for this one, if I can. And I'm also shooting at F13. That way I've got a nice front to back focus. I should get detail throughout all the rocks, all the way from here, way out to my top of the frame. All right, I'm gonna mess my settings a bit more and we'll throw the foot up on the screen. I should have a little bit more light left after that to hopefully get one more shot. So let's have a look at the photo. So we're getting a little bit of colour in the sky right now. But the composition I had, while well, I really liked it in the end, it, the angle isn't quite right to get that colour in the sky. So I'm happy with the lighting in that first shot, but I do want to get some of that little bit of orange glow we're getting in the clouds up there. So I'm going to go for another shot and angle a bit more slightly towards that to try to get it in the frame. Let's see if we can do it. As I was wandering off camera earlier, Another thing that sort of jumped out about me about this little section was the jagged edges, like these really sort of 90 degree sharp points we're getting on this side of the frame. So I'm gonna see if I can maybe line something up where I'm getting, I'm using these edges a little bit more in my foreground and try to angle things up towards that little bit of color we are getting in the sky. So I'm gonna get low with my tripod now and see if I can work that out. So there's this one really sort of nice sharp point we're getting in the rock chest here and it's really sort of jumping out and sort of biting into the white water. And from this angle, I am getting that little bit of wispy cloud in the sky, and it is catching a little bit of color now. And I'm gonna switch my camera onto a two second timer. That way I can hit my shutter and take my hand off. That way I'm not getting any shake or vibration on the camera as it goes off. So I'm doing exposures right now of about one second. And what I'm doing too, because I think it looks the coolest, is waiting for a wave to come in. And then as it recedes is when I hit my shutter or just before, because I've got the two second timer on. 
but basically timing it as the water rushes out, I think. For me, the textures you get in that kind of movement looks a lot cooler than the water coming in. It's a lot more smooth, kind of silky movement rather than sort of rapid smashing you in the face. And I'm really liking how the one second shutter speed looks at the moment. It's nice and wispy and silky and smooth. And the smooth water really creates a kind of juxtaposition between the smoothness in the water and the jagged rough edges we've got in the rock. So we've got contrast in the sense of black and white, but also in the sense of the movement and texture we're getting in the different surfaces throughout the shot. Look at me getting all in depth with explaining a photo. I never do that. So I wasn't expecting this guy to do this, but as you can see, it's gotten really pastel-y and getting a lot of nice sort of purple and orangey hues. And it's end up being a really cool sunrise. Sunrise, sunset. I'm so used to doing sunrise, but I still say sunrise even when it's sunset. But I'm still just knocking out some shots as the water rushes in. Some of these waves are getting quite crazy, but as it's getting darker, the sky is lighting up even better, the darker it gets. But also, I can keep my shutter speed nice and slow where I want it. Two second or so shutter speeds, just give me a really sort of cool, silky look and going really nicely with the pastel tones we're getting. So I'm gonna keep doing this, get the photo, and I'll show you guys on the screen once I get it to work. Okay everybody, well I've been so in the zone that I didn't even realise that it's gotten dark. Which means I'm gonna say thank you for joining me on this one and I'm gonna head back to the car. In a sec, I'm really in the zone of being like addicted to hitting the shutter again and again. But once I get through that, I'm gonna head to the car and call it a night. As always, huge thanks for joining me on this one. I do really appreciate it. I know it's been a little while since the last video, but it's really good to be back, really good to be out. And really good to have you guys joining me on this one again. I'll do a quick plug for my 2023 calendars, which are available now on my website. I'll throw up a coupon code somewhere here on the screen. Anyone who watches the video to get a bit of a chunk of money off that total price, because I do appreciate you guys. And if you would like one of my calendars, I'd like to um, yeah, look after you a bit and give you a bit of coin off the total. So if you want one, they're on my website. If you do get one, thank you so much. If you already got one, thank you even more. But until next time, guys, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Take it easy.